quite often you can hear a statement from someone which appears to be so fundamentally flawed that you wonder why anyone would be actually taking it at face value. And yet it would appear that a significant proportion of the population think the statement is true, don't even think to question the merits of the statement. And one of the principles behind this kind of thinking is something called the illusionary truth effect, sometimes more accurately called the reiteration effect. Now, the reiteration effect has a major impact on both politics and advertisement. So what's actually going on with these statements and how is the human brain processing this information? Well, as the brain processes new information, normally the brain is somewhat skeptical of anything that's new. This skepticism is reduced if the information comes from a trusted source. It won't be treated as fact without some general form of confirmation. However, the information will be stored in the brain with a kind of virtual flag on it as a statement being questionable. The human brain and most animal brains have a kind of autopilot mode in doing some kinds of repetitive or oft repeated tasks. Don't really think about too hard about doing them and we kind of sleepwalk through them. So our brains are potentially could be thinking of something else or working out some major problem but at the same time achieving success in some basic task. So the more often we do something in general, the less we actively tend to think about it. In the past, this might have been doing something like picking fruit off a tree, peeling it and eating it. Now it could be something like walking home from the shops. We're all about to choose the same route home, make required turns on the path, but actually actively thinking about what we're doing or where we're going. So if now on our journey, we are a new set of roadworks from our standard route home, we now have to actively think about the details of the journey, potentially plan a new route home. Potentially if the roadworks go on for long enough, our brains may even create a new autopilot route which avoids the roadworks. The curious thing is that once this new route is established, the previous route may now be rejected by our autopilot. And even when the roadworks are completed, we still continue on the new route to avoid the now non-existent roadworks. So the more we do or even hear, read or interact with something, the more it comes to establish our brains as normal and correct. We get back to the statement the brain has stored with the virtual flag on it. That same statement, or when expressing the same general ideas or principles, is heard again. The brain goes, oh, I've heard that somewhere before. It's back to the original memory of the statement and potentially removes the virtual flag on it as a questionable statement. And instead now accept it as a fact. In general, the more often a statement is repeated, the more likely the flag is to be removed. The more times you walk down the same route, um, the more it gets to added to the autopilot list of activities. Now, plenty of obvious examples of this in advertising. Yeah. Seeing the same advert for a product maybe over a hundred times, we then tend not to question too deeply whether their particular product does clean better or last longer, or whatever their particular claim they're making for the item is. We accept it's being accurate because we've heard it so many times before. Now, in adverts, this doesn't always work well because the initial information didn't come from a trusted source and in general, we're fairly skeptical advertisements in the broader sense. But that skepticism is reduced when the source of the advertisement is trusted to a greater degree than normal. This kind of messenger effect is why some adverts use trusted personalities to sell goods. So if a well-known sportsman is saying that a pair of sneakers are the best, it's easier for us to believe the sportsman, so he should know what he's talking about, since in theory, he needs to use the best products achieve the best results in their field. We do this overlooking that you might be being paid by the product for the endorsement and also have, might have an ulterior motive for actually making a statement. Equally, some adverts use the concept of two apparent members of the public talking about a product over a garden fence or similar situation, again to reduce our level of skepticism about what they're actually saying. When these adverts are repeated to us, the reiteration effect tends to come into play and we don't question it so much. In science fiction, there's a classic example of the reiteration effect of the now legendary episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, which Jean-Luc Picard is being questioned about how many lights he can see. Picard is continually told there are five lights, but he can only see four lights, rejects the statement there are five lights. The idea behind the interrogation method, Picard later admitted was starting to work on him towards the end, was that the interrogator was trying to get Picard agree to a statement which we fundamentally knew to be untrue by continually repeating the same untrue statement. If the interrogator had managed to get him to accept there were indeed five lights, 
but make the interrogator now a trusted source of information, and any future statements made by them were less likely to be flagged up as questionable when they were first heard. Potentially could enable the interrogator to get unlimited information from Picard, given enough time. This idea of a trusted source of information is very important in politics. As once a politician is regarded by some people as being a trusted source of information, new information, no matter how potentially dubious, doesn't always get that questionable flag placed on the information when it first arrives. So if the information is then only repeated a few times, it is rapidly accepted as fact. The process does also work the other way round, so the more someone listens to a politician repeat the same thing, the less questionable statement that becomes, so then comes that statement becomes a statement of truth. This also means that the brain thinks that a politician is being truthful in what they say. So even when they say something to which a normal person would be ridiculous, it isn't questioned when it goes into the memory. Example this lack of questioning in regard to a statement from a politician was that a school was supposed to be receiving according to one politician, billions in funding to teach a particular course, which is a hot topic of their political party. To an outstander, this statement was fundamentally flawed on several levels. Starting with the amount, the billions that was mentioned was far more than the entire annual budget for the school. It couldn't possibly be the funding to teach a single course. The next factor was that a particular school was teaching students at a very young age who don't even study a particular topic if at all, until much later in their educational life. However, the target audience viewed the statements coming from someone regarded as a trusted source, and having that statement repeatedly and questioningly repeated by some media outlets meant that for some people the statement was accepted as fact rather than just a blatant lie. As you can see, the illusionary truth effect or the reiteration effect is a powerful information weapon in the wrong hands, and why the effect should be have you questioning everything, no matter what the source of the information. You should always have try to have as many sources for your information as possible.